Good evening, everyone. My name is Heath Haskins, Code Primate, and welcome back to another Lumber Tycoon 2 video. Um, before I get too far into started into the game and forget <laughs> this entire incident, I just wanted to say sorry to um, iHack, I underscore hack. Um, the username is actually I eat don't drip it. I eat don't drip it. So, um, he was inside lumber whenever I joined one of the public servers and he was flying around doing his exploit thing. And I got a little personal <laughs> with the, uh, the insulting, um, nothing, nothing like that would be bannable or mean, but basically like, dude, you're a cheater. You are nothing more than an exploiter who doesn't know anything about actual computers or what you're even doing. You just probably looked it up at some other YouTuber's um, website or some other uh, Google search that you have no clue what's going on. So I just want to put this out there for any exploiter who watches me. All right. And I know there's some good guys out there and I know there's some bad guys out there and I know there's some people that like me and I know there's some people that don't like me. I don't really care. If you're using exploits, all right, be prepared to take a little bit of insult from me because I'm absolutely going to insult you. Um, and not in like a bad way. And it's very logical in the way that I, I speak to you. Like, I'm going to tell you straight up, you're a cheater. You can't play the game normally. And you probably don't know what files are being manipulated, how to inject an actual DLL file, or the fact that you don't even know how the Lua scripts work in the exploits that you're using. So when I call you out on it, don't get mad. <laughs> Please don't get mad. This particular person started insulting me quite graphically, actually, which, you know, I probably deserved because, you know, I was kind of bugging him a little bit. But again, I do apologize. The um, the going and trying to kick me after I'd already looked up your profile and <laughs> kept joining you afterwards was that was priceless. OK, because I mean, I wasn't going to load in my base in the first place. Uh, that's one of the first things I do if I'm in a public servers. I'm looking around to see if anybody's claiming they're a hacker, hacksaws or being elites. You know, it's, it's the ones that don't put it in their name. And, you know, it's like Gamerkin137 or something like that. You know, when you don't straight up try to be a Haxors or like just, uh, just why? I mean, you, he kept trying and trying and trying. He kicked me like, I would say 20 times. And that was fun because I kept jumping back in and just being like, oh, try again. Oh, try again. Oh, I'm back. Can you actually do anything to me? Can you like prove that you're a hacker? And he's like, load your base. I dare you. I'm like, hmm, poor kid. I'm so sorry. That that was fun. But at the same time, I, I do apologize. It was probably pushing too far. Um, especially when he finally left and tried to go to some other game. I don't know. It's in my history, but it was, it was funny because then my insults got to the point where, Hey, I hacks and, um, you got any scripts for this game? Cause you can't play <laughs> just, mm, I don't know. It was fun. <laughs> it was fun to me, probably not to him. So. I just wanted to apologize to you and say, um, learn to script. If you're, if you're going to like, at least understand what you're doing, you know, understand a little simplicity about like how the hacks work, how exploits work. And that's just it. Like a lot of people think that I'm against exploiting against exploiters and stuff like that. And, I am against the use of exploits, but I am never against the idea that you want to learn more about how something works. The essence of hacking, the, what is it? The, the thirst for knowledge that is supposed to be unknown because the information's out there. Anybody, anywhere 
at any time can go and look up how to hack. In fact, if you wanted to, you could make an entire career out of it. You can become a pen tester. You can become uh, an exploit developer. But I would recommend that you go and get your CEH, your Certified Ethical Hacker degree, and actually put it towards something good. That's, that's the big difference. I just don't understand the whole Roblox exploiting. Now, for like Fortnite, Call of Duty, stuff like that, games with a little bit more skill set, I would understand. But Lumber? Really? Lumber is the game that you're choosing to exploit? And a lot of people will try and justify it. And people right now, get, get away from your keyboard. Get away from your keyboard if you're about to comment something about exploits and justify it. You cannot justify it, okay? A lot of people are like, well, code, because of the economy, if it wasn't for the exploiters, we wouldn't have the amount of fire axes that we do. The fire axe would have been long gone. And guess what? You're right. The fire axe, the beta axe, the alpha axe would probably be so scarce that very little people would have them. And the people who do, did have them would be in the position that the developer originally intended, which was to be a rarity, to be a status symbol. But no, now we have piles and piles and piles upon piles in bases and in people's games just ruined. And that's one of the reasons I like playing on a solo base. That's one of the reasons I'm in here, is so I know that nothing inside this game got exploited in, nothing in this game, everything that I'm doing on this particular base is done from scratch. And that's, that's the way this one's going to be. I'm going to keep it like that. <sighs> now, here's another thing. A lot of people will try and claim, well, code, don't you use door bridges? Isn't that kind of exploiting? Well, not exactly. That's still like an exploitation of something, but that's not using an exploit, like an external program to change the game. That's finding basically a bug. And if it's fixed in the game, if it's fixed by the developer, I mean, that fixes the problem. I can't use the door bridge anymore. And the day that it comes that I can't use the door bridge anymore, I'll go back to playing the regular way until I find something else that, you know, is just happens to be a bug. The, uh, the blueprints, flipping over the trucks. I asked Defaultio one time why he never put like a button to flip your truck or like the ability to flip the truck. And he said, that's part of the gameplay. That's, that's part of it is it makes you more aware. It makes you more careful to not flip your truck. You know, it's, that is part of the game. Um, there, there's a RDC 2018, I think. It might've been 2019, where Josh talks about the development of Lumber and Lumber Tycoon 2, like the first one and the second one. And it's just, it's a very in-depth look into his persona and into his mindset of how to make video games. <clears throat> Even the idea behind Lumber Tycoon 2, like the originality of it, is very original, but it's not from scratch. It still takes into account the idea of a tycoon type game. And maybe I'm just talking boring stuff now and we could go on to just talk about non-boring stuff, but I digress. I still think it's fun. I don't know. I, I think it's more fun to discuss the inner workings of a Roblox game versus playing the game itself sometimes. Like, I would love to tell you how the scripts of the conveyor belts works. <laughs> uh, and I don't know exactly. Like, I, I couldn't tell you the exact script but I can tell you what it's doing. Why? Because I understand the script. And I guess that's what makes me frustrated. I took the time to learn all the different 
ins and outs of programming languages, um, different scripting languages, different compiling techniques, operating systems. I mean, it doesn't stop at just programming. It doesn't stop at just building or modeling. It takes a, basically it takes my lifetime and I'm still learning stuff every single day. Like I was just watching a tutorial today on how to create, um, what is it? Fire particles inside Blender 3D, which by the way, Blender 3D, if you don't know Blender 3D, go and grab yourself a copy. It's free, it falls under the GNU license. GNU license is public license. It means it can't be copywritten. Well, technically it is copywritten to say that it's free. <laughs> and if you use it or parts of it, those parts have to be, be free as well. And the original GNU has to go along with the license, which I think is a beautiful thing. An entire operating system that you don't have to pay for. Ubuntu, Linux, operating systems. And um, one of the things that I love is Blender originally started on Linux, I think, or Unix. It might have been Unix. I think it was Linux. But it's been ported since, and it's been changed since. So it can now go onto PCs. It can go onto um, Mac, like all the different OSs. And if you're wanting to build your own at home emulator game machine, I highly recommend LACA, L A K K A, I think, LACA. If you don't know what LACA is, or if you don't know what an emulator is, don't worry about it. It's just every possible game from the Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, and Nintendo 64 that you could ever want to play. Of course, it doesn't come with the games, but that's beside the point. I forgot my coffee. I forgot my coffee. That's the problem. That's why I'm jabber jabbering so much right now. Because I just had a run in with a script cutie who got insulted, which again, I apologize. And I haven't had a coffee in probably about four hours. Ooh, my ADHD is just kind of taken off with me. By the way, if you happen to have ADHD or other um, things that people label as mental disabilities, don't take them for granted, okay? Take them as that is part of who you are. Now, granted, I take medication um, I am actually on Wellbutrin just because I can't have the stimulant versions of, of ADHD medicine. Like I could, but it kind of interferes with me. So we just stuck me on Wellbutrin and it's like, oh, look at that. I can concentrate for a good seven hours. Okay. We'll use that then. But <clears throat> I also don't take my medicine. I don't take my Wellbutrin on the weekends. That way I can let my mind just wander, and be free, and be naturally what it is, ADHD. And a lot of people, they try and use that as a crutch. Stop using it as a crutch. ADHD is not a, like, <clears throat> it is not a disability and the fact that you can't do something. In fact, your ADHD is probably a superpower that you just haven't unlocked yet. The moment that you figure out how to control when and what to say, right? And a lot of a lot of neural divergent people will call this masking. But once you learn what the social construct is to a normal conversation, to everyday like conversation inside a restaurant, how to order, stuff like that, your social anxiety and stuff will probably just melt away. It'll, it'll disappear. And it gets better as you get older. I don't know if I'm helping anybody at this particular point in time, but I hope you're listening. <laughs> and for those non neurodivergent peoples out there with the regular brains, don't be discouraged. Coffee does the same stuff, right? Imagine this. Imagine if a normal brain is, let's say a one, that's not to be insulting, and an ADHD brain is at a five. When you drink coffee, imagine the one brain coming up to the level five. Whereas the level 10 brain would be coming down to a level five. That's the best way I can explain it. 
Like there's a there's that's the happy medium. When both parties drink coffee, it's it's like sinking. Because people who don't have ADHD, when they drink coffee, it becomes a stimulant. But when you um, have ADHD, it actually allows you to focus and calm down. So it's one of the reasons I push for coffee. Um, parents with children who have diagnosed ADHD. I'm not saying like you just think your kid has ADHD. I'm saying diagnosed. And there is a big difference. Try coffee. Try caffeine. No sugar. Um, that's one thing that I found whenever I was doing the ketogenic diet. Like whenever I was on keto, um, whenever I got rid of the carbs and the sugars, it actually helped with the concentration. I was able to concentrate more. Right now I'm not on keto. I think I've said this in a previous video, but um, basically it it's different. It's like this awakened heightened state of mind on keto that I, I just, I can't explain it. I don't, I don't know why it works so well, but it does. I'm going to need to go up there and fix that one. It's like driving me nuts right now. Anyhow, what should I name this one? The, the video, should I name it like code builds or code insults hackers, code insults exploiters. I don't know. Could probably call it something like that. I'm sure it would get the exploiters to click. <clears throat> Anyhow, um, I also have a lot of people who give me grief about being inside exploiters um, discords and stuff like that. Now, just so you know, I'm not active in any other discord than my own, and I am a member of multiple ones, but only because I think that's where I need to be. Like, I don't exploit. And I know that I've got the role of like one of the lead developers of an exploit tool. I didn't develop any exploit tools. All right. I, I've not programmed any exploits or hacks and probably, oh gosh, it's had to been over 18 years because it was, it was before I got married. That was the last time I had ever programmed a virus or an exploit. So, yep, I'm a good guy now. I'm just a good old white hat hacker. No bad stuff here. Now, I do, every once in a while, um, you know, just get this wild feeling of nostalgia. And I'll go and download a VM. And I'll load up some, uh, some old school viruses just to watch them tear apart a Windows 98 box. But that's just for fun. I make sure that everything's safe and it's in a well enclosed environment. Hmm. Would you guys want to see something like that? Because that's a big difference in between the viruses of my age versus the viruses that we have nowadays. Like a lot of these things are crypto lockers and ransomware. Like back in my back in my day, back in 1997. We didn't have viruses that were destructive, just really annoying. Like, we still had destructive viruses, but it wasn't, it wasn't about the uh, destruction. It was about the annoyance of interrupting life, you know? Just interrupting somebody's day and having a good chuckle at it. That was, that was fun. And for those of you who are wondering, the best way to be a hacker is to not tell anyone, not to brag about it, because that's the stuff that gets people caught and people get griefed for, you know? Because there's always gonna be somebody out there who is better than you. There will always be someone who can out-program, out-game, out-hack you. Hmm. Just saying. Just, just for funs, for funsies. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm getting to the point where I really do enjoy all the different things I get to do every single day. Like my job itself. I'm a bot maker. I create 
automations and programs that do stuff automatically for people. I love RPA development. It's fun. And you know what? I'm still pretty good at doing web pages and, and web apps as well. Like um, I had a one ticket, one project that's kind of been sitting there for a little while. It's probably been two, three months and I haven't touched programming for probably about three, four weeks. And I've just been bot building, bot fixing. So today I got to uh, finish out one of my bots, made sure that it was working pr properly. And I look over and that project is the top tier. It's like, hey, this is the one to get done next. So I went and grabbed it, jumped in, and there's probably, there's a list of 12 things that I need to go and fix and, and change on an application. And I mean, it was just like one, done, two, done, three, done. And it was just fun, you know, going through the task, getting them corrected. And here's the thing in 10, 20 years, it won't matter. The stuff that I did today, it's not going to be looked upon as like, Oh goodness, code, you're so amazing. You're the best programmer ever. Nobody cares. I, I'm going to tell you that right now. If you are a developer, if you're um, going into the programming field with the expectation of recognition, you will not get it. All right. Without saying it out loud or without typing it in the comments, just right now, can, can you tell me who the developer of Mario Brothers is? And if you can't, that's awesome. But do you know his name? I, I know it's a Japanese name. And I've heard it hundreds of times. But I'd have to go and look it up. You know? Um, who's, who's the guy that developed the first... The first Easter egg? Warren Robinette. And the video game was Adventure. For uh, the Atari 2600. Now here's the thing, back in the day of Atari and the games they created, they would not put the developer's name anywhere on the cartridge or the packaging. So a little developer named Warren Robinette created an Easter egg, the first Easter egg found in a video game. And he hid it where your protagonist would have to go, I think it's on level three, because there, there were three different levels. There's one, two, and three. You would work your way through the labyrinth, kill the three dragons, and then find the ladder, which would lead you to a single pixel item. It was a small gray key. And that key opened up the, um, the door at the very beginning of the level, because there's this flashing door. You could not get through it without this little key. Um, the only problem is it wasn't just the key, you also had to have a secondary item, so it would glitch out and let you through. Once you got through, it would flash his name on the, uh, on the screen. Now, up until Ready Player One, I did not realize that was the first Easter egg. I literally did not know that. Which means, even though Warren Robinette made this amazing Easter egg and it got so much attention and Atari shipped out thousands upon thousands of copies of this game, not realizing what the developer had done, I still didn't know that little tidbit of history. Something I should probably have known. Being a gamer, being a developer, stuff like that. So. I hope you've enjoyed my story and my passage through time. I, re I really like this. I love it when I've got a lot to say on one video and I can just come in here, put my mind to work. My mind's doing one thing, my avatar's doing another. It's like we're two separate entities sometimes. 
Oh, goodness. But I, I kind of see this as like... This is also me whenever I'm doing redundant tasks and kind of talking in my own head. You can just imagine me being the consciousness of code here. So Heath Haskins is the uh, subconscious of code primate. <laughs> if you want to look at it that way. I, mean, I don't know. It's getting kind of deep. Um, anyhow. Um, a, a lot of Easter eggs came about in 1995, 1998 time frame, especially with like the Microsoft products. Oh my goodness. To find the hidden flight simulator inside Windows, or yeah, inside Windows Excel. That was cool. You had to select X95 through L95, hold control shift and click on the help button. Like, I don't even remember how to get to it, but it was this elaborate, like, steps process. And then once you completed it, it would launch a little, like, flight simulator that they had programmed into the background of the Excel worksheet. So when you're in <laughs> the accounting class and all of a sudden you're flying around in a flight simulator and the teacher catches you and goes, how'd you get there? I'm like, I didn't download anything. And she's looking at you with this intent of like, you've done something, you did something. <laughs> and then to go and show it to her on her own machine where she knows she's locked down because of the IT department and games aren't allowed on the machines. Sorry, it's kind of loud. Just fun. But again, I digress. I think I, I think I have more fun talking about the experiences than the experiences themselves. Like it's, it is one thing to go and perform the Easter egg, but then to like let others know and to tell them the stories of the Easter eggs. Actually, is that website still online? Hold on. I need to go look something up real quick. Oh, it's still there. Eeggs.com. 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 It is still there. In fact, there's 14,450 total Easter eggs with zero new in the last two weeks. Oh gosh. If you've never heard of an Easter egg in software, movies, DVDs, find out more here. So, and what's funny is movie makers, they, they will put in Easter eggs all the time. Pixar, Disney, they do this stuff. And you'll see, you'll see little things in relation to uh, characters and to different things. It's just fun. Wee. So it's not just game makers, you know, it's a lot of us. <laughs> I wonder, hold on, let me jump out real quick. Oh, shoot. Hold on. <gasps> no, we got like one minute left. I tell you what, I do need a piece of, um, piece of gold wood so I'll go get the one gold wood and hopefully hopefully make it back in time let's see one big golden wood where is it that's a good one I like that one there there we go all right buddy come you're coming home with me like a Christmas tree in December. This one's a good one, Dad. Let's chop this one down. Woohoo! <clears throat> oh, by the way, Thanksgiving is coming up, but I've already seen a lot of Christmas decorations and stuff out at Walmart and out at the mall and just in general, people are like putting up Christmas stuff, which I've got no problem with. If you want to start Christmas early, it's a little annoying if you do it before Halloween's over, 
but you know it tis the season tis the season to be merry jolly and stuff so if you want to celebrate that's fine go for it um put down below does your family do a christmas tree and if so do you do live christmas trees or do you do the fake ones? Is it the plastic synthetics? Which which one do you prefer? And some of you might not do Christmas trees, and that's fine too. You know, um, it is a Christian thing, so it's fine. If you do Christmas trees, I want to know: do you do the real ones or do you the the fakes? That's going to be bing, the question for this episode. What kind of tree does your family do? If you do one at all. Do, 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 do. That's something else that I wanted to start doing with our family. <clears throat> Excuse me. Like, I want to start celebrating other religions' holidays and other cultures' holidays on our holidays. Not like on the same day holidays, but like on the holiday days that you're supposed to celebrate them on. I think it'd be fun and enlightening. Now, there are some people out there who would be like, that's culture appropriation, blah, blah, blah. And I don't care. It's still learning about other cultures and accepting everyone for who they are. Just because like you accept them, doesn't mean you have to believe in the same things them. And I hope, I hope that's not insulting to some people. Cause I know a lot of people are like, you can't do that. You know what? I do claim Christian, but at no time have I ever like stuck the creator into that box. You think I would know? No, I, I think the universe is way too big for for me to be that close-minded. So, anyhow, just just saying. <gasps> Ooh, it worked. And it worked really well, like right off the bat there, nice. I wanna make sure that this just gets done real quick. We got two minutes. Um, Maybe no Minecraft tonight. I haven't been feeling all that well today and I kinda laid down for a nap earlier. I do feel better, but my stomach hurts and I had a little bit of a headache. I don't know if you could tell in the video. I hope it didn't come through the video. I know a lot of my emotions and stuff, they always seem to rear their ugly head whenever I'm like upset inside a video. So if they did, I do apologize. If not, that's cool too. I still had fun. I still did the original intent of what my videos are. And that's coming on here talking and having fun. And maybe giving you a little bit of a better day. Getting getting you away from the the run drum of daily life. Is it run drum? Hum drum? Hum drum? Hum drum. I don't know, somebody comment. <clears throat> I love comments, by the way. If you are on my video and you are sending comments and you get a heart, that means I read your comment. If you did not get a heart, that means I haven't read it yet. I'm not sure if I will read it. There's a lot of comments to go through. But usually what happens is the moment the video releases, I start looking for comments, you know? And I'll, I'll keep an eye on them throughout the day because I always do. I come in and I check to see how well the video is doing and what people are commenting and if people are enjoying the content. And for the most part, I think you all enjoy it. Ugh. I would love to see um, a lot more people with notifications on for Zero Decaf Coffee, uh, which by the way, I did tweet out. Um, again, it's not family friendly, but it is my second channel and I love it. I love being able to be more loose over there. So that one's just not gonna, oh wait, 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 wait. We can still get this. We can still get this. Hold up. Let's go to one and one. Waste not, want not. Get the whole thing. Bam, look at that. We can actually go use you right now, buddy. Boom. Nice. Thank you everyone for watching this episode of Lumber Tycoon 2 with me, Heath Haskins, Code Primate. Again, I apologize to iHacks, like whatever your name was. Um, I didn't mean to be 
insulting, but at the same time, yeah, I did. <laughs> Love you guys very much. Have a great night. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we will talk to you soon. Outro. That was not as low as normal. Outro.